political impact of the Vietnam War. So we are going to look at the impact, the domestic impact of the Vietnam War. How did the Vietnam War affect and change America? Uh, we're going to start with the political impact, move to economic, and then go all the way to social impact of the Vietnam War. Johnson announces March 1st, 1968, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Politically, Vietnam was a disaster for Johnson. Uh, Johnson uh, won his first uh, term uh, shortly after um, Ken well, he took over for Kennedy. Uh, after his assassination, won his first term um, and had great plans uh, for his presidency, uh, wanted to focus on domestic issues, uh, but tried to tackle too much, tried to um, cover all of that was necessary within, um, tried to do domestic programs with his great society, which was a series of welfare programs uh, set to bring about affordable housing. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid uh, were part of these, uh, these ideas of, of Medicare for uh, people that were uh, disenfranchised, orphans, um, widowed, uh, single parents, um, and just help with this idea of uh, the handicap to help bring about equal more equality for, for handicapped people, but also to, to just uh, help with overall society. Uh, and His Great Society was a series of these laws that would, were going to cost quite a bit of money, um, and that uh, is one of the things that, that seems to die within uh, the because of the Vietnam War. Nixon and the silent majority. Uh, one of the things we know that the Vietnam War divided America, it divided its soldiers uh, along lines of race, divided its soldiers along lines of whether they supported the war or didn't support the war. It also divided people at home. Uh, people were already divided by race, <coughs> and this seemed to divide people by class um, and uh, depending on uh, what they believed about the war. Nixon felt that there was a silent majority that believed um, that the, the United States should win the war in Vietnam and would support him. And after his speech, he had a 68% approval rating. So it seemed to be there, uh, but it quickly evaporated with the bombing of Cambodia, and, and um, which after he bombed Cambodia, 60% of America said the United States, or questions what the United States is doing in Vietnam. There were people um, that supported Nixon, uh, politicians uh, that were on the more conservative side. Ronald Reagan uh, believed that the youth movement and the protests were uh, sex, drugs, and treason. Uh, and many of the conservative people in the Republican Party and just conservatives in the United States and older people believed that this was uh, more of the, this what agreed with Ronald Reagan. Uh, the Cooper Church Amendment shows that Congress was beginning to uh, sour on the idea of the Vietnam War, and they basically revoke uh, the president's powers under the uh, Gulf of Tonkin Resolution and say that the, the president needs to go through them if, as far as attacking Cambodia, uh, expanding the war, that they need to keep the war within South Vietnam, stop the bombing unless they have approval of Congress. Um, this didn't have a lot of teeth to it, however, um, and Nixon continued to, to fight his war. Uh, one of the things that you can say, uh, Nixon resigned on August 8, 1974, the first president to resign. Uh, and this might have a lot to do with uh, his handling of the Vietnam War, with the Pentagon Papers being leaked. Uh, his attempt to try to discover who leaked them um, led to his paranoia that eventually led to what, the Watergate scandal um, and eventually led to his resignation. So Vietnam uh, was part of the downfall of Nixon. Uh, the War Powers Act, 1973, Congress passed this act, basically stating that the president... Uh, may only use his power of commander-in-chief if Congress declares war or in imminent danger, but must go to Congress within days of that to get approval. Um, otherwise, they must remove U.S. armed forces. So basically stating that or limiting uh, the president's power to put the U.S. armed forces in different places around the world without congressional approval. And that was a direct... Uh, direct attack on uh, the president's role in Vietnam based on Johnson and Nixon. They wanted to limit the power the president had. Uh, domestic impact, economic. 
Uh, the war was expensive and caused deficits in the federal budget and balance of payments. Johnson's dream of great society uh, between 1965 and 1973 died um, within, he was only able to do some of it. Uh, many of his great society programs had to uh, go to the wayside because for some reason he felt like he could uh, do whatever he wanted foreign policy wise and domestic, but the foreign policy and his war in Vietnam of $120 billion limited his ability uh, to make an impact on his society. Domestic impact in Vietnam, there's some divisive issues. Uh, the anti-war movement began small, it began in colleges, uh, began with intellectuals, um, and did not seem to was did not seem to go national until later. Um, when Rolling Thunder uh, brought out, which was the bombing of Vietnam, you began to see the, the movement grow. Uh, on first protest in D.C. on April 17, 1965, 25,000 people picketed the White House um, in response to the bombing of North Vietnam. Who were the activists? Well, realists like Hans Morgenthau and George Kennan, who was the author of the containment policy, uh, even Robert Kennedy, who was the brother of John F. Kennedy, uh, all began to speak out against it, but more of speaking out against whether Vietnam was worth being part of the containment policy. Morgenthau and Kennan said the United States has no strategic need to be in Vietnam. They have no holdings there. They have no reason uh, to contain communism within Vietnam um, and began to see that uh, the and did not believe in the domino theory, and so believed that the United States could um, extricate itself from Vietnam and not lose at the Cold War. Two radicals like the Students for Democratic Society um, and others that even uh, used terrorist acts to speak out against the Vietnam War, uh, but there were radical groups that, that staged uh, protests um, against the U.S. government. The movement peaked in early 1968 after the Tet Offensive, um, and that brought about uh, even stronger uh, and more prominent uh, movement, and you began to see a lot more protests. And this just showed the division which was in America with Dixon's silent majority of people who felt like these protests were treasonous to others who um, felt like these protests were exercising their American rights and, and speaking out against the government that they no longer trusted. Uh, media during the war is a really interesting thing. I want you to take a look at some pictures here. Uh, this is a picture uh, during the Tet Offensive um, that shows the wounded, uh, wounded American soldier being pulled out by his friends. Uh, the, the Tet Offensive, the filming of the Tet Offensive, um, and even Walter Cron Cronkite's response to the Tet Offensive, which was to, to be shocked that America could um, say that they were so close to the war and then be attacked uh, so with a, such surprising force um, and be taken for surprise. Uh, the Tet Offensive was announced as soon as it happened um, and that brought about protests right the next day while it was still being fought. Um, and you, you see from the American press that uh, the Tet Offensive would not have been as big a deal if the press was, if the media was not there, if television wasn't there and the media the immediacy of knowing about what happened with the Tet Offensive was what made uh, the American public react so strongly against it. Had it been something where um, it was a delayed for a day or two days, um, I think the effect, the news would have focused more on the fact that it was a huge defeat for the Viet Cong and the communists rather than looking at it as a defeat for the United States. Uh, here is another photo that's often been misunderstood, uh, was put in the media. This is uh, a general from the South Vietnamese Army um, who is about to and executes this man here. Uh, it seems oppressive. It seems uh, like the U.S. is supporting a corrupt regime. However, uh, the man on your right is uh, accused of being a um, part of a Viet Cong hit squad that um, basically killed the family of this general right here. So this man here is considered um, part of a Viet Cong uh, assassination squad, which was pretty prominent 
and he just executed this general's entire family. And so you can see why he wants revenge here and why he might execute him right here in the street based on the fact of this brutal civil war. Um, and that the United States was embroiled in this, but oftentimes this photo is meant to look at how corrupt South Vietnam is rather than looking at this man's role um, that might have uh, definitely antagonized this general and even uh, brought about this retribution. So what you see here is a demonstration against the Democratic uh, National Convention. Um, and you can see uh, the brutality of the police just pushing back the protests um, and just how divided people were as they're trying to hold the convention to elect the next thing. There is thousands in the street protesting. Um, and you can see within this picture that there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, so in March 1970, U.S. in Cambodia. April 21st, uh, Nixon and his nationally televised speech. Uh, and this led to uh, immediate protests. Once Nixon announced that, that Arvin and uh, U.S. troops were invading and attacking the Ho Chi Minh Trail within Cambodia and Laos and basically expanding the war, the anti-protest kind of hit a new, uh, new high uh, and broke out and continued at colleges over 221 colleges throughout the United States. Four million college and high school students staged a walkout called a moratorium um, in which they uh, left, uh, hit the streets, um, and uh, did peaceful marches against um, Nixon and his policies, university presidents and retired military officers um, who would often be considered more, maybe more conservative in this, wrote letters to Nixon urging him to remove U.S. troops now, basically showing again the division within the United States that Vietnam was causing. Um, and a lot of that was brought on by just the, the news and the media, which was um, very uh, prompt in, in showing these different uh, different things. Uh, then you have Congress was swamped by anti-war telegrams and joined the nation in denouncing the invasion of Cambodia. And on May 5th, Nixon pledged that U.S. troops would go no more than 20 miles in Cambodia and would draw from Cambodia by June 6th. But again, people didn't necessarily believe him. Uh, the trust for Nixon, the trust for the American government um, had evaporated because of the lies, uh, the things that were brought on, um, and also because of the um, because of the Pentagon Papers and the release of the Pentagon Papers. And here you see a student lying dead during the Kent State shooting in which the National Guard opened up and killed two people that weren't even protesting of the four that died. Uh, there was another protest that followed at Jackson State um, in Mississippi uh, that also shows um, just the crackdown that the government did upon these protests um, and limited people's rights of free speech um, and uh, continued to be divisive within America, bringing more and more people to stand against the government. Then you have the selective service system, which was a draft. Uh, one of the problems with this draft and why it was a lottery, um, and so certain uh, numbers would be drawn and anybody in those numbers would then have to go to Vietnam. Uh, but what is interesting here is that there were exemptions. This is uh, not, you hadn't seen this since the uh, Civil War where people could buy somebody to replace them in the draft. In this case, exemptions for college students, teachers, and medical notes from doctors um, were brought about uh, so that if you went in to become a teacher, if you were in college um, and were accepted and moved straight to uh, grad school, if you couldn't because doctors, which caused some corruption of paying off doctors to right reasons. Um, senators, sons, and others were exempted um, even without some of these reasons, whereas um, other people were not. The draft gave young people a direct route to protest the war, uh, a way where they could burn their draft cards, they could go to Canada, they could protest, um, and, and basically uh, apply for conscientious objector status, which believes that you do not believe in conflict. Um, two Catholic priests stormed the draft office in an attempt to burn files in Michigan. Um, and by 1969, 50% of the men in California refused to show up uh, for the draft. Uh, and uh, again, 
uh, left people to believe that um, well, the draft was another uh, divisive uh, element within the American uh, participation in Vietnam that led to a lot of people um, being upset about the way it was done. And it also brought or continued the race issue because there were more Mexican-Americans in the war than uh, there are a higher population in the army uh, and being drafted than in the society. Same with African Americans. They were a much larger majority of the army than they were of society. Um, and, and poor, and the American poor were much more represented than people of rich families who were able to work their way to exemption. So that is the domestic effects of the Vietnam War. And we will uh, wrap this up uh, tomorrow and Monday.